Good afternoon. Welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is uh, July 27th. Let me just fix that. And today we have myself, uh, Bruno Brockton, and Mark Waite joining us. And if others come, we'll welcome them in. Uh, for the agenda today, uh, some blog posts have been published recently. Uh, the next LTS baseline discussion has been started. Uh, some just notes on the weekly and LTS release we had uh, yesterday and Tuesday, respectively. Uh, security advisory that was published yesterday as well. Uh, some notes on Google Summer of Code, the Java 17 transition for the documentation, uh, some open pull requests of interest that we've uh, discussed previously, and finally DevOps World Tour. Uh, is there anything else we need to add, or if that covers nothing? It? Okay. Nothing from me. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so first things first. So uh, again, the blog post. So. Uh, Chagruti has been uh, participating in the Google Summer of Code, and she's uh, posted and created these blog posts describing um, and providing some more insight into the probes that have been getting worked on during the Google Summer of Code. Um, they were all published respectively in the last week or so, uh, week or two. Um, but uh, yeah, they just provide some nice insight there. Uh, and then we also have a, a full midterm recap for Google Summer of Code from all the participants here. Uh, so they've got their own respective sections and providing some insight into what they've been working on. Uh, really great info. And this goes right along with uh, the midterm presentation that they just had recently, which uh, you can find the recording in the slides here. Uh, next item on the list here is the next LTS baseline discussion uh, has been started and has been making progress in the developer mailing list. Uh, right now, 2.414 is the front runner. Uh, many people are supporting it. Jimmy Combs accepted that as far as uh, what we can use. And there have been discussions about uh, some security issues or backports that need to be uh, made into this. Um, so the discussion's happening. Uh, Alexander Brandis is going to be the release lead. So thanks to Alex for st stepping up and taking that on that role. Uh, and the changelog and upgrade guide need to be created, uh, but that's something I'll be working on in the coming days. So. That should be we're seem like we're in a good place and, it, and the discussion and everything's happening really well so uh, we're, we're doing pretty well there uh, uh next up so uh both the weekly and lts release this week were security releases so uh the change log was published by the security team and they made sure to include the security advisory that was published as well um, so this was published yesterday, uh, and the security advisory affects uh, both plugins and Jenkins core itself. So this is important to keep in mind and be aware of. Uh, next up again, so Google Summer of Code is making great progress. Uh, we've reached a halfway point and we are now heading into the last half, the second half of Google Summer of Code. So. Uh, figuring out um, the the rest of the way, what next steps to have to take, uh, and any kind of pivoting or any changes that ha are happening are all being done in uh, best interest of the project and, and the progress being made. Uh, next up, so the Java 17 transition is something that we've been discussing and working on for some time now. With the Debian 12 release back in June, uh, Open JDK, JDK 11 is not delivered. So uh, we've transitioned to using Java 17 and Java 17 supported images in the documentation. So for things like the installation documentation on Linux, um, specifically because it uses Debian, uh, we, we've updated that to now use the Java 17 uh, and uh, uh, in, re, uh, corresponding images. So Eclipse, Timurin 3.93-17, et cetera. So uh, this is happening. This has been going on. Uh, thanks to everyone for helping out with this and uh, proving and getting this uh, really well uh, taken care of. Uh, we also have Java 11 to Java 17 upgrade instructions uh, as its own separate page. So uh, this is available and includes a really nice walkthrough that Darren Pope created for us. Uh, that walks you through that process exactly. Um, working on tutorials right now to get those updated. Uh, for the most part, it's formatting and making sure that everything is uh, aligned, but 
Uh, at this time, I've only completed the building a Java app with Maven tutorial. There are others that still need uh, that review. Uh, and the last piece that we still that still needs to be uh, updated is the Windows installation instructions here. Um, the reason being is that the Windows installation instructions are majorly outdated compared to what we're using for the rest of them. Uh, it's showing Jenkins 2.263.4. Uh, the only complication I've been having is that I don't have a Windows machine, so I've been trying to use uh, VMware and other uh, alternate options to try and get it working. Uh, oh. I haven't had too much trouble, but that one's a little bit beyond uh, my basic skills at this moment. Okay, if ever you want some help with that, I could help because I have a Windows machine. Um, so let me know if I can help. Yeah, no worries, Bruno. I asked... Um, I tried to find out if there would be a possibility of me potentially getting a Windows machine that I could use for these specific oh, scenarios, but okay. uh, I'm still figuring that one out. We'll see. They have some alternative options, um, but I wasn't aware of where to go for some of them. So uh, I have to follow up with IT and just talk to them about it, but yeah. Cool. Uh, and then one of the other items that I'm working on for the Java 17 transition is also a blog post announcing this. Um, the transition has been happening kind of behind the scenes and getting the documentation updated. Uh, I want to make sure that this is not surprising or uh, you know alarming to anyone. So uh, I'm working on that as we speak, and I'm sourcing through the uh, Oracle uh, release notes and other various postings, blogs, uh, pages that have been going through and comparing, contrasting Java 17 to 11, so that uh, I can provide uh, some good insight and some ideas as to why Java 17 is preferred. Uh, next up, uh, some open pull requests of interest. So these are ones that we have discussed previously. Um, the Jenkins on Kubernetes pull request just needs Kubernetes expertise review. Uh, the scripting and security page, again, these are this is at a point where we can work on it further, but uh, it's a little bit lower priority at the moment compared to other projects that we're working on, other tasks. So uh, we want to keep that alive it's valuable that page is really important and it's coming from the wiki so um it's got a lot of information that is relevant to jenkins and how and uh just needs some more love uh and then uh, this is something that we actually discussed last week and bruno added it in um but it's a pull request that bruno uh had written to add the update cli um we were talking about it and kind of using examples last week with the uh, different versions and different, um, uh, I guess, I'm trying to remember what it was specifically about. I wanna say it was one of the places where the Java 17 transition hadn't happened yet, um, but we know that it will need to be updated or one of the other versions will need to be updated again um, in the future. So. Bruno was explaining kind of how this would actually help with that and how this could benefit just um, long term usage. We already have Renovate and Dependabot. So uh, there are existing you know, cases of something like this. Uh, adding this one would be um, just another one on top of that to help support us and any Jenkins users. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Uh, I hope it could help. So uh, for me, it's more or less finished uh with the latest feedbacks from damien for example i made the latest adjustments so now the goal is to have people vote uh, so we can know if we should merge it or abandon it and i say that a few weeks from now i don't know if it's a regular thing to do but uh we could merge it or close it uh in depending on the results of the votes great and um is there anything is there uh, is there a specific comment or anything on here that we should be voting uh, on? Oh, sorry. Like... Yes, the comment where I say please vote, put a thumbs up or thumbs down. Uh, sorry for not being clear with that. Uh, it's oh, no. earlier in the talk. Yes, yeah, sorry. I was uh, thinking that it was done at the time I wrote this comment, so I didn't expect more comments to blur everything out. <laughs> sorry about that. No worries. It's not the okay. first so message is somewhere in the comments. Ouch. Oh, okay. Not so really. There, but there is a specific one that we can vote yeah. on in this case. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> See, like, stuff it's after this. this one, maybe. Yeah. <sighs> okay. I mean, I know there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> we'll here. So we'll find it somewhere. Scroll through everything. But... Yeah. Okay. Hopefully. Got it. Okay. Good to know, Bruno. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and then the last item I had on the agenda for today is DevOps World Tour. So registration's open right now. Uh, it's different from the last uh, last time we've done it. Uh, DevOps World Tour is now a uh, multi-date, multi-city uh, event. So this is more flexible and a little bit more accessible for people globally. Um, it's not all lumped together in one location for a handful of days where uh, it might be harder for other people to reach. So um, this is done in an effort to make it more welcoming, more accept more accessible, uh, and just provide uh, folks with the ability to go to DevOps World Tour in you know, the backyard if they feel so inclined. Uh, there's New York, Chicago, and Silicon Valley for the US, Singapore, and London are the international locations um, respectively there. Uh, and Mark is actually going to be at the three US uh, event dates to and giving a talk. So uh lots of reasons to go and see everything but uh mark being there is enough reason to go see the jenkins stuff uh his yeah. talk's called benefit your business by contributing to open source uh and essentially just explaining how contributing to open source really does uh help and impact the uh, company and uh just what kind of results you can expect from uh contributing and utilizing open source and from community as a whole Um, registration is open for DevOps World Tour, so feel free to sign up when you feel like it. Um, but yeah, and there's uh, the DevOps World Tour page has a lot more info uh, and ideas and updates about what's going on uh, and what'll be happening. So, um, so is there anything? That's all I had on the agenda for today. Yeah, sorry, you know, Kevin. I remember cool. something. Uh, sure. Once again, it's newsletter monthly newsletter, newsletter time, sorry. So mm -hmm. if ever you have a section on the document, feel free to enter your information whenever you can. <laughs> okay, thanks for your help. And second time, we talked a little bit about GSOC. I will try to be quick, fast, and not to spoil too much. But I know Mark was a real stakeholder on one particular function, which was get rid of the bash files, you know, so that we can only use Docker Compose something instead of launching bash files, which won't work under Windows, of course. And we have a PR almost ready to merge that works without these infamous bash files. So now for lots of platforms, we can already type Docker Compose up and it works. I'm still having some trouble under Windows for whatever reason, but we are investigating, so. Okay, great. Um, good to know. And uh, if you'd be able to share the link with me, uh, either like after our session, after the office hours are over, Bruno, I just so I can, uh, excuse me, add it in here or just keep track of it in general. Or yeah, of course, of course, we'll do so. And uh, I think Ashutosh will join tomorrow on Asia's Doc Office Hours. Maybe we'll make a demo. I don't know. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> We'll see, and we'll have to discuss because um, earlier this week I discussed with Mark about when and how should we integrate Ashutosh's work into Jenkins.io or Jenkins somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not ready to be integrated yet, but maybe one of these days we should discuss, should this be part of Jenkins.io directly? Should it be another repo somewhere? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's, um, I have to say, I don't know uh, what would be, I mean, I'd have to, i have to go through and uh, read up on, uh, you said it was Ashtosh's project that you're working on, yeah. this is part of? Of course. So, um, and uh, on top of that, I know there is the other GSOC project that is about rewriting the whole Jenkins IO website with Ontora mm -hmm. and the other tool I forgot the name of, uh, yeah. but I don't know how much we can integrate um, files from elsewhere with Entora. I know it's pretty limited for the time being with what we are using, 
I forgot the name of what we're using now. Bad boy. Uh, but I think we can Fast include track. for the... yeah, you're right. Spot on. I think we can uh, include some files which are a part of the repo uh, for the time being, which is already nice, so that we could get uh, you know samples, code samples directly taken from code files. That's the first interesting oh. interesting step. But if ever uh, the code we use for the tutorials was taken from another repo, would we be able to include the code directly into the Jenkins IO building workflow? I don't know. I don't have the answer. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. And these days I'm using more and more Git sub, Git sub modules. You know, you have a repo and then in this repo, you declare that you depend on another Git repo and then somehow magically, uh, whenever the remote repo is uh, updated, then you get uh, the updated ver version directly in your own Git repo. So maybe we could have a sub module um, to include Ashutosh to work. I don't know. We'll see. Sorry, being maybe too technical for documentation office hours. Just thinking yeah, about it's good to have all these. It's, it's good to have, even if uh, even if I'm not uh, hundred percent no. sure of what that entails. It's still good to know about, you know. Um, and it it's it could affect documentation down the line. Like you know, like these are all relevant, even even if it's not. Uh, yeah, these are all relevant. Don't worry about that, Barbara. No. Okay, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, and and uh, I've seen the work that Bundy and. Uh, has been doing on the alternative build tools for Jenkins.io and it looks really, really good. Um, I know we've shown it here in office hours a couple of times, so um, it's not unfamiliar, but yeah, I mean, uh, if there's multiple ways to get like all this work put together or integrated into Jenkins.io and like I mean, there, it, the works, uh, the progress being made so far is really awesome. So if we can get that actually integrated fantastic even if it's a slower process than we'd like or just making sure like you said making sure that the files and everything can be done the way mm -hmm. that we're intending and you know hammering all those uh or um, finding all those weird little inconsistencies and wrinkles that we might not have seen so uh yeah i can imagine it's not as straightforward and as simple as you know you would think because that's how everything always is um no, that's not, I, it sounds really exciting and I, I can't wait to see what we're able to do with the Google Summer Code projects okay. and like their works. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, yeah, of course, Rina. no worries. Thanks for sharing all that. Uh, so that covers the agenda that I have here. Um, just as a quick note, so uh, Mark is back. You might have seen him earlier, but that means uh, Docs Office Hours Asia will uh, be back on for this evening. Uh, so uh, you'll see him there. Uh, outside of that, I think we're going to wrap up here. Video recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours. And uh, until next time, take care.